you all. Welcome to the morning read. Happy 39th morning read, y'all. 39 days straight we've been reading this word aloud. Welcome to Religion Wink TV, where my spiritual ears stay. <laughs> Guys, we did it. 39 days straight, right? They say it takes 21 days to form a habit, good or bad. And look at us, y'all. We here forming all kinds of habits with the word of God, right? We pretty much get up over here, y'all, on this channel. First of all, if you haven't already subscribed to This Morning Read, support this channel. Help us get to 1K, okay? That's all we need from you is to just hit that red box, the bell icon next to it. Stay informed with the Wink Squad, the Wink Stars, the notification gang over here about religion, church, uh, ungodly things, black people, people of the Bible that this world would choose to write about but tell you they don't exist. <laughs> and it ain't even the world wrote about. God inspired this word for his people, but yet they'll put it in a book and tell you it's not about you. Anyway, we're going to get into a lot of that today, y'all. I got a little bit of time, okay? So, I want to come back on here and talk to you about being black, okay? And white people, people, you my brothers and sisters, nonetheless, my great-grandmother was white. My grandmother is white. My mother is part white. So, I say I never let the black side of me hate the white side of me and I never let the white side of me enslave me. That's the way you need to be with the people of the world with the lighter brother, darker brother syndrome. That's not what this is about though. This is about the morning read and unfortunately we get into this kind of stuff in this Bible. The world's history, the world's problems, the world's chaotic behavior is found in this word. That's why we know some people like to get up and read people for filth. But we like to get up and read people to life, okay, guys? Because why? This is Religion Wink TV and my spiritual ears stay. We've been reading the book of Samuel. And these chapters we're about to read, 28, 29, 30, 31, will end the first book of Samuel. But as we read in the beginning of Samuel... It was all one book in the Hebrew Bible. Let's find that Hebrew Bible, okay? And you'll find your truth. <laughs> Thank God it's still left in this said Bible here. We just have to rightly divide the word of God so we know what our truth is, right? From amongst the lies that this world has been telling us. So, with that being said, guys, we learned that Hannah, she could not have children. Penina... Uh, Elkanah's other wife had kids, was taunting her. She went to the temple. Eli the priest thought she was drunk. She said, no, my Lord, I just want a son. I want a son, and I'll dedicate him, vow him to the Lord. Samuel grew up under Eli in the presence of God. Uh, was the Samuel, first, like, judge, seer, prophet of Israel at that time. God used him to anoint David and elect King David, but Saul... The people want a King Saul, so they got King Saul, right? <laughs> and Saul is a hot mess, y'all. But anyway, Saul went on his mission to kill David because he got jealous because King David was getting more praise and recognition than him, like so many of you people out here. That happens to me on a lot on, on traditional jobs. Everywhere I have ever worked, y'all, sidebar, side note here, people have been jealous hateful, mean, uh, rude, disrespectful, uh, nitpicking. It always was like an evil spirit on them against me. You know, kind of like how Saul had this evil spirit on him from God against King David, elect. And I said yesterday that that was kind of to build up King David's uh, faith. It sure has built up mine, even though I've lost jobs and had to restart over and stuff like that. It has definitely built up my faith. And guess what? Just like King David, King Saul never got an opportunity to kill him. 
just like my ex-bosses and women and black women at that on the jobs of the traditional workplace um they haven't killed me yet right thank god i'm still here encouraging you and if you show up during this premiere that's definitely encouraging me that what i do on religion link tv is not in vain so king saul tries to kill king david elect his son Jonathan grows fond of David. They grow their own bonds. And it's just this cat and mouse. So yesterday we read, God put a slumber of sleep on Saul and his men. King David was able to go and uh, get his sword and his water canteen. And they had this, ah, ha, 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 ha. I could have just killed you moment. But look, I spared your life again. Because King David could have killed Saul prior to this, right? So where we're at now is just basically we're going to finish this chapter. I'm going to try to keep it well with under an hour, guys. <laughs> I always say don't vex the spirit of the Lord. Do not, um, you know, hinder what you feel God is trying to say through you. Sometimes we get on here to read this word and it takes us other places in the spirit, but it all ties together. And guys, the, as much as your truth you can get out there, you'll stop living the lies of the world and of the deceivers of the world. And we all know that that's the white European Caucasian man that has found a way to impress the rest of the races of the world. Oppress. And demon filled spirits are possessing so you gotta know the two there's an oppression and then there's a, a possession okay and a lot of that is happening to god's people twofold on both sides of the coin a lot of you are oppressed at the hands of the enemy and a lot of you are possessed by his teachings his ways his his wickedness so with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get right into Samuel chapter 28. And we will be reading through chapter 31. And guess what, guys? This is the ninth book of the Bible. We started on Deuteronomy chapter 5, right? And we have traveled all the way through the promised land by the hands of Moses and Joshua. Moses couldn't go to the promised land. Joshua took us over. We're still kind of in the promised land. We met Ruth. We met Gideon. We met Samuel, King David, Saul. All these characters are coming into play. Naomi, we met a lot of these people. Boaz. So the lineage is being built now we're at Jesse. We got David. Solomon has not showed up yet, who is David's son. You know, David begat Solomon. And it goes all the way down to this is the tribe that the Christ sprang out of. The tribe of Judah, people. These are your ancestors. That's why... They would remove your tongue, remove your memory, put you so far into bondage during slavery that you would not remember that you're the people this book is talking about. How much of a deception is that? The devil would take the word of God, put it in the book, and tell you you're not the people of it. But yet everybody goes off of what these people did in this word. Don't be deceived, people. So if you want to get caught up with us during this morning read, right, I suggest you go all the way back to Deuteronomy 5, chapter 5, and then I suggest to get on one accord, go back to Genesis 1 and 1, okay? Because that's where in the beginning, and you can read all the way up to... 1 Samuel chapter 31, and you'll be caught up with the morning read. And guys, if that's too much for you, pray that God can pick you up on tomorrow's read. It will be episode 40, 40 reads live, y'all. Premiere live, recorded, however, 40 days straight, okay? So let's get into the morning read. Chapter 28, verse 1 says, And it came to pass in those days that the Philistines gathered their armies together for warfare to fight with Israel. 
And Ashi said unto David, Know thou assuredly that thou shalt go, go out with me to battle thou and thy men. So he basically saying here, you know what? You're going to go out with me and you're going to battle with me against your own people. Two. And David said to Ashi, Surely thou shalt know what thy servant can do. And Ashi said to David, Therefore will I make thee keeper of my head forever. David like, yo, you know I killed Goliath, right? You know I killed the bear and the lion, right? You know Saul been trying to kill me all the days of my life, and I escaped him every time. You know I had two opportunities to kill Saul, right? <laughs> You know the Lord walk with me, right? You know the Lord talk with me, right? <laughs> you know I fight the battles of the armies of the living God for his people, right? David trying to remind the king, you know I'm a Hebrew Israelite, right? <laughs> and you asking me to go out and fight against my people? You're telling me you're going to make me king over your head forever? Let's go. Verse 3. Now Samuel was dead. And all Israel had lamented him and buried him in Ramah, even in his own city. And Saul put away those that had familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. See, Saul don't want no more familiar spirits of God. That is the prophet. That is the seer. They've been trying to do away with the prophet of God since the days. Since the days of Samuel. Because he was the first kind of like wizard seer whom God used to anoint people and say you're going to be the next king and speak his word like that. You know what I'm saying? It's like this This is, it tells you in the book of Samuel that Samuel is the first seer or prophet. So he want to do away with that. Like so many people in the world today want to do away with the voice of God. You can't let that happen, people. So four, and the Philistines gathered themselves together and came and pitched in Shunem. And Saul gathered all Israel together, and they pitched in Gilboa. Five, and when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart greatly trembled. Six, and when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. God will shut his his voice up to you, his ears up to you. God says in the book of Revelations, his eye is on the righteous and his ear is open unto them. David kept calling Saul the anointed of God. And I told y'all yesterday, God been removed his spirit off of him and put an evil spirit on Saul. So God is not listening to Saul at all here. Let's find out why. Eight. So, oh, 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 excuse me. Yep. Um, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Seven. Then Saul said unto his servants, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit. This is the spirit of divination. This is the spirit that's similar to what God wants of his prophets. But it's more like a mimic spirit, like an imitation spirit. That I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said unto him, Behold, there is a woman that has a familiar spirit and endure. I believe this may be Anna the prophetess here. We did badass women in this day and age, and it was basically on the Bible, women of the Bible. We had from A to Z, go check that video out, and she is mentioned here, okay? So, it goes on to say, it may just be the woman of endure, the, the, the prophetess of Endor, but I believe there's a prophetess named Anna we're going to run into eventually. And here is a familiar spirit now living in Endor. 8. And Saul disguised himself and put on other remnant, and he went, and two men with him. And they came to the woman by night, and he said, I pray thee, divine unto me by the familiar spirit, and bring him, and bring me him up, whom I should name unto thee. I bet you you're going to say, damn, David. <laughs> I, I bet you. 
Guys, don't think I sit here and read these before you. I'm reading along with you. Now, I have a history of reading the Bible and know what content is in the Bible. But these morning reads are organic, y'all. I cannot make this stuff up along the way. That's why I'm glad, like, we all hearing certain things for the first time together. Because you actually see my reaction and get my personal commentary on it as well. Remember, I no longer read this book for salvation to set people free. By this time, you should know good from evil, right from wrong, God from the devil. This is historical to show my black people that we are these people in the Bible. Been doing it from video one. And I'm 563, 64 videos maybe this will make today. And talk nothing about black people, spirituality, Christians need to wake up, yada, yada, yada. Black leaders like Al Sharpton, who back about five years ago, I told y'all on Facebook, he sold out Martin Luther King. I told you Martin Luther King was a CIA agent and was working against the American people than for us. He threw a couple of Bible verses out there and let rain fall from heaven like judgment. Yeah, that's biblical, but you know what? A lot of his walk was ungodly, and I'm here to tell you that. People, you got to stop feeling sorry for what is or what was and start, you know, having courage for what is. We, we, we in the bind that we are because of some of our black leaders and because of what they did with this Bible and the people of the Bible. That's why the world is the way it is today. And I don't feel sorry for that, y'all. All I can do is learn what the truth is and give it to you. I have mad compassion and I mourn for the state of the black people because of what the devil did to us. And yeah, I get it why black sectors call the devil the white man the devil because God forbid, kill, steal, and destroy. Roaming to see who they can seek and devour. Look out in the land and see who's doing it. Oh, people, excuse okay? me. I got water and coffee, y'all. I'm going to try to get through this read. All right. So, it goes on to say, 9, And the woman said unto him, Behold, thou knowest what Saul hath done, how he hath cut off those that have familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. Wherefore, they then say, Layeth thou a snare for my life to cause me to die. How he going to cut off those spirits? The familiar spirits that know how to prophecy a little bit, know how to see things, and the wizards that was doing black magic. And how you gonna cut us off and then sit here and ask me to do a divine seeing for you to bring up somebody you want? You trying to set me up, Saul, like you did King David. Come on, King David, I love you. After the people praised King David more than Saul, he invited him to his house and then became his worst enemy. Watch out, people. Watch out. You know that happened to a lot of people. Oh, I like you, my best friend. Come over. Boo-boo this. Boo-boo. Yeah, shout you out. Shout you out. Uh. And behind your back, they're your worst enemy like Saul was trying to kill King David. So it goes on to say 10. And Saul swear to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord liveth, there shall no punishment happen to thee for this thing. 11. Then said the woman, whom shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, bring me up Samuel. Oh, hell, he wants Samuel because Samuel. <laughs> I thought he was going to say David so he could kill. He wants Samuel because remember, Samuel was the first seer and prophet of the Most High. And judge of the Most High God. Well, not so much judge, but seer. Let me go back and tell you. And Samuel's name is, um, it says the first book of Samuel was writ written in Hebrew. And he was the first, the last judge in the first prophet. The last judge in the first prophet. Okay. So he's the first prophet of God, y'all. The first one God says go anoint this one da 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 a lot of times him and Moses Moses wasn't really a prophet it, prophets didn't start until Samuel okay but his name is the name of God he is of God heard of God and asked of God okay so now we go back to verse 11 in chapter 28 then said the woman whom shall I bring up unto thee and he said bring me up Samuel 
And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice, and the woman spake to Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. Saul disguised himself, went to this woman, deceived this woman, pretending like he was someone else, and he deceived this woman. Let's see how it unfolds. 13. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid. For what saw thou? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw gods ascending out of the earth. I saw gods ascending out of the earth. Okay. 14. And he said unto her, What form is he of? And she said, An old man cometh up, and he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and he stood with his face to the ground and bowed himself. 15. And Samuel said to Saul, Why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? And Saul answered, I am sore distressed, for the Philistines make war against me, and God is departed from me. What do you think Samuel going to do? Samuel told you God said he was going to depart from you in the, in the earlier read we, we read, right? And then it goes on to say, Excuse me. And Samuel said to Saul, 15. Why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? And Saul answered, I am sore distressed, for the Philistines make war against me. And answereth me, and God is departed from me, and answer me no more, neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore I have called thee, that thou mayest make known unto me what I shall do. 16. Then Samuel, wherefore thou dost take Thou, dost thou ask me seeing the Lord is departed from thee and is become thine enemy this is where God he's saying God is no longer my friend y'all David didn't wasn't aware of that God Ben took his hand from Saul there's a lot of people in the presence of God still calling themselves prophet prophetess God been removed his hand from them. That's why you see them, especially on YouTube, cutting up the way they are. Appearing to have a form of godliness, denying the power thereof. So it goes on to say, in verse 18, 17, And the Lord said, and the Lord hath done to him as he spake by me. For the Lord hath rent the kingdom of thine hand and given it to thy neighbor, even unto David. 18. Because thou obeyest not the voice of the Lord, nor executed his fierce wrath upon Amalek. Therefore hath the Lord done these things unto this day. You didn't obey God. A lot of y'all not obeying God. And his hand has been long since removed from you. 19 and i don't want to say this of my black people but if we don't turn from our wicked ways those who are called by the most high god and pray and seek him he will never hear from heaven again and he will never heal our land we have to turn from our wicked ways of serving other gods which is jesus and the niacine creed and the white culture tradition of the greek men that gave us this book after we just read, Samuel came from the Hebrew Bible. But they give you the watered down edition of it because they want to keep the body strong. But the mind weak. That's what slavery is all about. So we have to break those general, generational curses of believing that these people meant as well when they gave us this book. That has so many other scriptures and written accounts removed from it. The more of your truth is, is not in here. Enough of it is. But the most of it find it in the Apocrypha. The books of Ezra. Son of Siraj. Second Maccabees. Jubilee. Jasher. Enoch. Even Thomas had an account. Mary Magdalene had an account. God used a lot of people to inspire his word and write about what was happening to our ancestors in that day. 18. Oh, 19. Moreover, the Lord will also deliver 
Israel with that with thee into the hand of the Philistines, and tomorrow shalt thou and thy sons be with me. And the Lord also delivered the host of Israel into the hands of the Philistines. Samuel said, Tomorrow I'm dead. Remember, y'all conjured me up with your little witchcraft or whatever going on over there, your little wizardry, uh, but your little divination. But you know what? Tomorrow, this time, you and your son's going to be with me. So, it goes on to say, we remember what happened to Nabal. Nabal thought he was uh, doing big time things with his merry drunk self, right? He actually did something evil against the Lord and in the eyes of David. David went to go kill him. Uh, Nabal's wife, Abigail, met David. Said, no, my Lord, my Lord, started talking to the king and him, right? And then Nabal, ten days later, God smote him. Vengeance is mine, thus saith the Lord. Vengeance is mine. If we start praying to God against white people or against the enemy, look what will happen, y'all. Y'all afraid to pray for the people who hurt you. When Christ said, pray for those who spitefully use you, did uh, misuse you, and abuse you. Despitefully, spitefully misuse you. You know what I'm trying to say. The Lord shall deliver the host of Israel into the hands of the Philistine. 20. Then Saul fell straightway along with the earth and was sore afraid because of the words of Samuel. And there was no strength in him for he had eaten no bread all day nor all night. And got the word that him and his sons is going to be with Samuel who is really dead here y'all. But the woman in um, indoor conjured him up like you witches out there trying to do today. All these spells and shit. It, it's in here, but we're going to break it down. Because parts of it is wicked and evil. But now that you brought the man of God up, he telling you, you and your son's going to be with him tomorrow, Saul. In the saws of the world. 20. Then Saul fell straightway along on the earth and was sore afraid because the words of Samuel, and there was no strength in him. And he had not eaten a bread all day or all night, y'all. 21. And the woman came unto Saul and saw that he was sore troubled and said unto him, Behold, thine handmaid hath obeyed thy voice. And I have put my life in my hand, and I have hearkened unto the words which thou speakest unto me. 22. Now therefore I pray thee, hearken thy also unto the voice of thine handmaid, and let me set a morsel of bread before you. Let me feed you, please. That thou mayest have strength when thou goest on thy way. Baby, let me feed you before you and your sons. You know, you got to go on your way from here. I don't want you to end up where uh, Samuel is tomorrow on my doorstep. So I'm going to feed you and send you on your way. That's between you and God. <laughs> don't take other people's problems into your account. Feed him. He hungry. Send him on his way. 24, 23, but he refused and said, I will not eat. But his servants together with the woman compelled him and he hearkened unto their voice. So he arose from the earth and sat upon the bed. 25, and she brought it before Saul and before his servants and they did eat. Then they rose up and went away that night. That ended the last verse of that chapter, chapter 28. Now we are moving right into chapter 9. This is Religion Link TV and my spiritual ears stay. Yes, guys, let's get it in. 29, being led by the Holy Spirit, y'all. Verse 1. Now the Philistines gathered together all their armies to Aphek. And, this, and the Israelites pitched by a fountain. Um, that which was in Jezreel. 2. And the lords of the Philistine passed on by hundreds and by thousands. But David and his men passed on the reward of Achish. The rear reward like behind Achish. 3. Then said the princes of the Philistine. What do these Hebrews here? Oh what do these who? Hebrews. Where the Hebrew people at today? This world have not killed us all off, y'all. This world have not put us all in a transatlantic slave trade and demolished us, y'all. This world still have Hebrew Israelites in it today. Hi. 
I'm a Hebrew Israelite. I'm one of the people the Bible's talking about. But you, the world, don't want to believe it or admit it. And the government is so hard against you because they know it. The government, the queen, and the pope. Those are wickedness seated in high places who know the truth about the people sold into slavery. Their ancestors helped do it. Three. Then said the prince of the Philistines, what do these Hebrews hear? What? Do, what, what? We, we hear. We want our land back, which is repatriation. And we want the shit you stole from us, which is re reparation. What, what kind of Jesus you serve? Haven't Jesus spoke to you about what you did to the people back in the 1600s? Hell, back in 70 AD when Constantine went through Israel and ran our ass out. Jesus ain't speak. You don't hear from God? It's because you don't love God according to Romans chapter 1. The one who holds the, the world's religion in his hand don't even love God. That's why they still have him on the staff. Like, look what I did to your Savior, the black Messiah. You don't see no face of no white Jesus on them crosses. You see the stone. You see the wood. Because what did God tell you? You will serve wood and stone in your bondage. Is your Christ still on the cross? There Jesus is. And I said, the real killers of Jesus, please stand up. I did a video. Guys, look what I did to your Savior. Look what I did to God. I killed him on the cross. And told you it was a crucifixion. What? What they gonna do to me? Kill me like they did Bob Marley, like they did Hell Selassie, like they did Harriet Tubman, like they did my ancestors, like they did Martin Luther King, who really wasn't for us, Malcolm X, and all these other people. What they gonna do? Keep killing us off every time the light is birthed into this world? That's why they wanna kill every Hebrew child, male child under two. What if it came in the form of a woman this time? The world would not even believe that. Not even you black people. You are so conditioned. You can't even see real truth. Or the real light when it come before you. Because Christ was the light. And the light of all men. And the men comprehended him not. You don't comprehend when God sends you the truth. The, the grace and truth. In a, in a regular person. You're looking for this grandiosity. The, the, the chauffeur to blow. You're looking for the skies to part from heaven. Won't you just listen to what a person says? That might get us, you know, halfway there. Start listening to other people. Stop listening to the Martin Luther Kings and all these people. The Al Sharps and Jesse Jackson. Al Sharpton was an agent for the CIA. Go do your research. And the CIA has always been against God's black people, the children of Israel. So it goes on to say, um, what do these Hebrews hear? Verse 3. And I she said unto the prince of the Philistines, Is not this David the servant of Saul, the king of Israel? Which hath been with me these days and these years, and I have found no fault in him since he fell unto me this day. For And the princes of the Philistines were wroth with him. And the princes of the Philistines said unto him, Make this fellow return, that he may go again to his place, which thou hast appointed him. And let him not go down with us to battle. How can you trust this guy? He's the Hebrew Israelite. You know they killed all the Philistines. He's the one that killed Goliath. What are you doing? Send him away. <laughs> and it goes on to say, um, 
Right here. Down to uh don't let him go down the battle with us, lest in the battle he be an adversary to us. For wherewith should he reconcile himself unto his master? Should it not be with the heads of these men? What if he go down there and, and, and reconcile with Saul? His master, because remember, they he keep calling Saul his master and his Lord, right? David is very, very respectful in that way. He don't know that Saul is not that king that he used to be in the eyes of God. There's a lot of used to be preachers, a lot of used to be pastors, a lot of used to be prophets, a lot of used to be in the kingdom of church. Not the kingdom of heaven, but the kingdom of church. And these people are still there, but the glory of God has long since left them. You understand what I'm saying? And they know, you know, you don't, they, you don't know that. They know you don't know, you don't know that. So they keep coming before you with a Bible verse. <laughs> they know you like to feel good. Hallelujah. Play that old demonic. Oh, shit. I'm in the spirit now, y'all. Amen. I feel like, no. I can sound like demonic music to me. But anyway... Go on, your, your choice. I ain't here to knock nobody religion and how they worship their God, right? But well, it's a little strange to me what they do in church. <laughs> so anyway, it goes on to say, verse 5, It is not David of whom they sang one to another and dances, saying, Saul slew thousands and David ten thousand. Told you that's going to go down in history. Saul got jealous because David killed 10,000 men. He only killed 1,000. That's 9,000 more clicks and views than you got. <laughs> and you mad because people is praising the one that ain't even make it to 1K yet. And you got all those followers and everything. And they ain't no longer praising people like Mona Simone. Ooh, did I say that? <laughs> and my Nicole... <laughs> Tyler move. <laughs> Honey, you see how this work? This word will set the captive free if you just got ears, ears to hear what thus saith the Lord. Right? So it goes on to say, 6. Then I she, Akish called David and said unto him, Surely as the Lord liveth. Ooh, somebody know the Lord liveth. <laughs> Surely as the Lord liveth, that's how been thou hast been upright, and thy going out and thy coming in with me in the host is good in my sight. For I have not found evil in thee since the day of thy coming unto me unto this day. Nevertheless the Lord's favored thee not. You're going to see some people in this world that's not evil, y'all, but that's your that that's your abnormal. See, it's normal to see evil people. And then when you see people that's not evil, you be like, oh, shit, that's abnormal. That's not real. No, remember, you people that belong to this book, you are in the world, but you are not of the world. So stop acting like the world. Stop trying to be a part of the world. I told you, it is better to stand out than to always try to fit in. When you fit in, who's going to get all the glory? The one that's already on top, right? Stand your ass out sometime. You don't got to go into every group, every chat, every this, every that. Hell no. And then people will start to notice you. When you're trying to fit into what's popular and what's on the rise and all that shit, you get lost in all that. And unfortunately, so don't the person at the top. Especially when God didn't raise them up to be king or queen. No matter whether it's on YouTube, in life, or in this world. People will get to that power and that position and abuse it because it's not of God. So, then it goes on to say, verse 6, we read that, right? 7, wherefore now return and go in peace that thou displease not the lords of the Philistines. See, you have the Lord's and then you have the Lord. All right. Let's not get that confused. Eight. And David said unto Achish, 
but what have I done? Like, why you want to send me away? What we've been rolling for the last two years, we ain't have no problem. You know who I am. You know what I'm about. You know I'm down with the Lord. You know King Saul been trying to kill me, but yet I still call him my master and my Lord. Talk about respect, right? So then 8 goes on to say, And David said unto Achish, What have I done? And what hast thou found in thy servant so long as I have been with thee unto this day? That I may not go fight against the enemies of the Lord my king. Now David is loyal to whoever he's under. He like, yo, I've been rolling with you, Akish. I know those are my people. I know that's King Saul. I know I killed the Philistine. But what have I done to you? Why are you throwing me away? I want to stay here and be loyal to you. 9. And Akish answered and said to David, I know that thou art good in my sight as an angel of God, notwithstanding the princes of the Philistines have said, he shall not go up with, with us to the battle. Now remember, King Ashish is the king of the Gaths, the Gathites, where Goliath reigned from, the same giant David killed in that battle of David and Goliath. And David is the one who made himself drunk in chapter 21, mad, crazy, or was it chapter 26? Chapter 20, it was 21. He was mad, crazy, and it says 13. And he changed his behavior before him. And it says, this is it, it's 12. And David laid up these words in his heart and was so afraid of Akish, the king of God. He was afraid of him at one time. So to try to get through his camp, because he was on this, you know, pity party in the wilderness kind of thing, trying to escape Saul. It says he changed his behavior before them. Uh, he was a wise man. He acted stupid, foolish. He fiend himself mad. He was calmly, you know, peaceable, kind of like me, you. And he was on this rage and um, pit bull kind of pit bull kind of behavior. And he scrabbled on the doors, just writing crazy, like writing, writing, um, like he's writing stuff on the doors. And then. It goes on to say he let spit drool down on his on his beard. Now he wasn't that type of guy, but to get away from King Ashish, and then only six chapters later, he want to fight with him against his own people, <laughs> or against the enemy. Let's just say against the enemy, okay? So anyway, it goes on to say in verse. 9. And Akish answered and said to David, I know that thou art good in my sight, as an angel of God, notwithstanding the princes of the Philistines have said, He shall not go unto, uh, up with us to battle. 10. Wherefore now rise up early in the morning with the master's servants, that they are come with thee. And as soon as you be up early in the morning and have light, depart. Instructions, people, are very important to follow. You think instructions. If somebody say, go home, open up your Bible, turn it. Don't go home. and Go home. Follow instructions, people. That is what's wrong with us. If we kept following the word of God, we'd have never got deceived by the word of the enemy in the world today. We won't be afraid of them. So, verse 11, the last verse of 29, y'all. We getting there. We almost done. So, David and his men rose up early to depart, and to depart in the morning to return into the land of the Philistines. And the Philistines went up to Jezreel. And that, that ends the read of chapter 29, guys. Going right into chapter 30, being led by the Holy Spirit. This is Religion Week TV and my spiritual ears stay. Alright guys, we're just under an hour. I think we can push out these 31 and 13, 44 verses. Okay, let's go. Chapter 30, verse one and it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziglag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziglag had smitten Ziglag and burned it with fire. They smitten the south and Ziglag and smote Ziglag with fire. Two. 
And he taken the women captive that were, were, were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So they went in and took the women. They, I'm telling you, they've been taking women and raping women since the days of this word, okay? And that's why they found it so comfortable to do it during slavery and, 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 and contaminate the bloodline of these people. Because they knew from the days of old that the Christ was going to come out of the tribe of Judah. If not, which brother? That's why they tried to kill all the Hebrew boys under two years old in Moses' time and in the times of Christ. So pay attention to that, people. They didn't try to kill the European baby boys, the Egyptian baby boys, the Hermetic baby boys, the, the, the Asian baby boys. No, even though Asians and the, the, we we gonna get into who the ch who the real children are. It's not just us black people. We are the tribe of is uh, Judah. But then there's Reuben, there's Gad, the American Indians, the Aboriginals who came through the Bering Strait way before Christopher Columbus. They were running from a man named Constantine who terrorized this world. He terrorized that uh that part of the world. And made everybody run out of Jerusalem and Israel. That's why I said they did not they did not get a, get away with killing off all the Hebrew Israelites. Three. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. Four. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept. And they had no more power to weep. You just get so tired of mourning and lamenting. You don't have no more tears. Not even power to cry, y'all. Some of y'all there right now, but don't know you can bounce back from that. You have lost just like these people lost in Ziklag. Just like our ancestors lost in Jerusalem against the hand of Constantine. In the Turkey Empire, the Ottoman Empire, the Khazar Empire. They was all just against us then. Listen to me, y'all. Five. And David's two wives were taken captives. A Hinoam, a Jezreelitis. And Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. Okay? Six. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him. Because of the soul, all the people was grieved. Every man for his son and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. This is why I always tell you, King David had to encourage himself in the Lord. When I sit over here, I don't get many views. I don't get people in my live stream. I encourage myself in the Lord. And I still have enough courage in me to still come before you. Regardless if only one other person show up. That could be me and the Holy Spirit. Because God says where two or three are gathered in his name. Touching and agreeing on anything we read. He is in the midst of us. So when y'all looking for all these demonic souls to show up in your life. Just to egg you on and make it look like you got a big following. I want one person with a heart after God like King David who always encouraged himself in the Lord to team up with me. And let's see how much damage we could do from this channel. Not only for this channel, for you, for my family, your family, but other families and other people as well. This is real, guys. I don't get on here and just talk it. I live this stuff. But what's wrong is white America got black people so afraid to say they're the Hebrew Israelites. So afraid to say they are the people, the real people of God. Collectively. A lot of us say it individually. But until our whole homes, until our whole communities, until our whole schools, wherever we go, wherever we wax strong, begin to say this again and sing out and cry out to God. And not this entity of a white man named Jesus in the form of the Pope's son, Caesar Borges. We will never get back to the full knowledge and understanding of who God created us to be. From the ground, that is. Not everybody can say they were created from the ground.
There was other gods and there was other races in this world, people. And if we, even if we go with Noah and his three sons, bet you Japheth, according to Genesis 10, is the lighter brother that may have been albino and, and, and had no melanin at all, pretty much, and went to the uh, to the mountains of the Caucasus, the Caucasus Mountains, and they weren't in Africa. To, they couldn't probably last on the continent of Africa because only melanin can. I mean, to an extent, you have white people over there now, but believe you me, the way they've been messing with global warming and the atmosphere, they done changed the seasons on you, and you don't even know it. Spring is now wintertime, wintertime is summertime, summertime is fall, and so on and so be it, okay? You keep letting them move the time, the seasons, the days. Even New Year's is not January 1st, but to fit their fiscal year, and to fit their purposes of making you forget when the real Christ rose from the dead. They went out their way to change even the early mats. They went out this way to make you think that the, the bigger population is Canada and Alaska. They have no people up there. If you flip it, we're supposed to be on top and they're supposed to be below. But they, they know as it is above, so it is below. They try to flip it on you all the time. Don't let this world use deception to do it no more. Stop being deceived. Get my voice out there, y'all. I'm asking you, get my voice out there. Please. Like, 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 like. Share, 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 share. Subscribe, please. Get my voice out there. God didn't give me a spirit of fear, but power, love, and sound mind. And I'm ready to talk on behalf of my people to whoever needs to hear it. Because the way y'all going about reparation, the people you got out there fighting for us, is not fighting from a perspective of truth. Matter of fact, you wouldn't even need nobody to fight. The only fight we need to do is unite as a, as a, as a people and start to believe again. And again, every black person is not Shemitic. Every black person is not Hermetic. Every black person is not Yephetic. Yephet. Jephetic. It just ain't. It, it, it just isn't, okay? So it goes on to say, David, two wives were taken captive. David was greatly distressed, and he uh, encouraged himself in the Lord. Seven. And David said to Abiezer, the priest of Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me thither the ephod. And Abiathar brought thither the ephod to David. 8. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue for, the, for thou shalt surely overtake them. See, God will tell you to overtake and pursue something, but because of fear, you sit back and you're still waiting on the Lord to move. And he created you for times such as these to go ahead and move into your position to take back your dominion, whatever that may be, black people, right? So, it goes on to say, and without fail, recover all. We're going to recover all one day. We just got to turn the pursuit on them. On the people who took it from us. On the ones you out here fighting for reparation for. I say look up the word repatriation. It means to go back to the land where they took you from. And we all don't come from the Egyptians and the Hematics. There's a small little place. A powerful place. The city of God called Jerusalem. And the land of God is Africa. Those people were sold into slavery. The Bible says in the Americas and the islands of the sea, you will find these people. Let's figure out who we all are, people. All the way out to Hawaii, all the way down to Australia, and probably Antarctica at this point in time. Let's do this. Remember, they'll tell you north, south.
south, east, west. There's nothing in between, nothing outside of that. It all is compassed right into those four quadrants. Figure out who we are. They'll even move the equator and move so much stuff on you people. Change the dates and everything to make you forget who you are. Sidebar, not only did they try to kill every Hebrew boy under two, year old, two years old, now they're trying to kill women, but yet they are still trying to kill every male Hebrew child by the hands of the police and other entities. I remember saying, you know, seeing police cars say, sir, to serve integrity, uh, respect, right? That's how unruly negros, because that's how you say negros. That's why, that's how you say the word, not negros, negros, right? From the tribe in the land of Niger, Niger, right? Martin Luther King was trying to tell y'all something before he sold his souls into uh, the hands of the enemy, into hell, as he said, in the burning house, right? We got to be real about this, people. So anyway, these people, you know, we have an opportunity to see that these people were unruly trying to get off the damn plantations. So they, they create this paddy wagon and this organization called the police to round up people, put them back on the plantations, and now it's the modern day prisons of today. Guys, hear what thus saith the Lord. Verse 9. Excuse me. Ver yeah, verse 9. So David went, he and the 600 men that were with him, and he came to the brook Basor, where those that were left behind stayed. But David pursued he and the 400 men, for 200 a bow behind, which was so faint that they could not go over the brook Basor. Listen to me, people. I'm coming to you late today. I had this all read out. It was in two parts. You got the first part. This is the second part. Reading from verse 7, right? Of chapter 30. I am so distraught in my spirit just a little bit. Because the teaching on this alone. I'm trying to remember some of the things I said. My recording went down on the webcam in Windows Movie Maker. It said I was out of storage. It only took the first part of it. So here I am, guys. As I am trying to just finish up the morning read it's like 1 20 p.m east coast time guys so i did get the first half of it edited and now here's the second half of it starting from verse 7 and we are in verse 11 of this morning read episode 40 y'all this is religion week tv and my spiritual is dead. all right guys yes so, there's, it, I, my joy is there, but just sometimes you get frustrated even in the Lord. We're reading. Our ancestors were not perfect. They had a powerful relationship, and we went through some things. Every time I come on with one of my best messages for black people to hear what the light sounds like of the world today, I go through all kinds of stuff. I definitely know I recorded two sections of this morning read and only one of them saved to the disc. I'm like, dang, y'all. But that's all right. Pray that I get better equipment with more storage and updated equipment and stuff like that. Because where there is the will of God, he will always make a way of, of escape, okay? Don't just say where there's a will, there's a way. Because any man can have his own will. But where there's the will of God, he will always provide an escape for you, an, a way out for you, okay? So this is how we have to do it. Two parts again, but I'm going to do the best I can, guys. Hopefully, you guys get the same experience you did the first time around. I started 10 minutes to 9, 8.50 East Coast time here in the States. And I got done a little bit around 10.20. And again, that second audio. So here we have it. I'm going to do the best I can, guys, to give you that experience. Because you got the first half of it. 
I didn't want to take that away from you, and I'm glad it wasn't taken away from you, but let's go ahead and finish up this second half. So it goes on to say, 11, And they found an Egyptian in a field, and he brought him to David, and gave him bread, and he did eat. And they made him drink water, right? And I did have my water cup here at that point in time, and I was like, mm-hmm. We took some water, right? Just trying to replay this and try to see if I could think and remember and hold on to. Because when God gave it to me, this is, this is the best I have. I have notes and books and things that I've written, handwritten. I like to write hand things out. But when I hear or, or reading from God, it's organic. It's not like I'm sitting here trying to take notes. I speak this stuff and then this is the, all the recording I have. And sometimes I lose a lot of stuff, yeah. So, 12. And they gave him a piece of a cake of figs and two clusters of raisins. And when he had eaten, his spirit came again unto him. For he had eaten no bread nor drunk any water three days and three nights. Feed somebody, y'all, if you see him hungry out here in the world. Bring their strength back. I say feed them the word of God. Feed them, feed them the spiritual food you know you got in you. Bring their souls back to life. But give somebody a meal. It's not going to hurt you. So it goes on to say 13. And David said unto him, To whom belongest thou? And whence art thou? And he said, I am a young man of Egypt, a servant to a Amale Amalekite. And my master left me because three days are gone, I fell sick. So his master left him for dead. He fell sick, didn't eat no food three days, right? His master left him. Side note, they say Christ was depressed in the ground three days. If you have anything you're going through by the third day, you shall rise from the dead, from the ashes of it, from the grave of it. That's it. Give yourself three days. You're no greater than Christ. You're no greater than your master in heaven. They suffered allegedly three days on this earth from the cross to the grave to rising on that morning. We got to figure out that morning because I don't think the God of Yahweh will want his son, the Christ, to rise on the Sunday, the day the sun God of Egypt worship. But this Jesus will the Roman Catholic entity and the Nicene Creed uh, creators will. They will. They'll always get you to worship on a different day of the week, which is a, truly your Sabbath is the day you should, Saturday you should be worshiping Yahweh. Right? So, uh, let's go there. Let's have these conversations. That's okay? why y'all Christians go to church on Sunday and was told that your true Sabbath was not Saturday because the Romans and the Egyptians worshiped the sundial and the sun god and the irises and the osirises and the Tammuz and the Estaris and the East Stars and all these other goddesses, right? And they worship Sunday. And they tell you that's the day your Christ rose from the dead. Your Messiah to the, the, the Hebrewic Messiah. The Son of God. That's not true, people. So, let me get through this. Let me get through this. So, 14. And he telling David, like, uh, I'm one of the people that just killed off Ziglag. And that helped steal your two wives. And now David just fed this man. So, let's see how it turns out. 14. We made an invasion upon the south of the Ch Cherethites, and upon the coast which belonged to Judah, and upon the south of Caleb, and we burned Ziglag with fire. 15. And David said unto him, Canst thou bring me down to this company? David like, all right, I just want to go get my wives. The women and children still alive? You know, let me, let me go. Is everything cool? I, I ain't going to take it out on you. I'm going to use you to take me down to where I need to get right now. And he said, Swear unto me by God that thou will neither kill me nor deliver me into the hands of my master. And I will bring thee down to the, his company. If you want me to do a deal with you. This part I remember. If you want me to do a deal with you, swear by God. They say don't swear by God. Swear by God because you will not break your oath in the presence of the Most High God. 
If you can't swear by God that you're not going to deceive me, lie to me, use me, play me, make a fool of me when we do business or any kind of transaction in the presence of the Most High God, I will not do business with you. Learn from your ancestors here. Learn, and, and, and he ain't even your ancestors, but back then people got to say, you swear before the Lord, make this vow to me to this day before the Most High God. Keep your word before the Lord, not before another man, because man can deceive you. They both can run out on you and overtake you, but God will never leave you nor forsake you. So in the presence of doing business, Swear by God. Let your yea be yea and your nay be nay in the midst of the Most High God. And then let somebody deceive you. And all you got to say, hey, we, we did this before the Lord. You swore before the Lord. Now, vengeance is mine, thus saith the Lord. And God's going to repay them their recompense in this day and age. Stop being so sensitive where you don't want to see people hurt for what they did to you. We don't want to see people dead, this, that, and the third, but people surely want to see us dead. People surely want to see us wiped off the face of the earth. People surely want to be richer than us. People surely want to be more supreme than us. So, it goes on to say, 16, And when he had brought them down, behold, there were spread abroad upon all the earth, eating and drinking and dancing. Because all the great spoil that they had taken went out of the land of the Philistines and out of the land of Judah, out of us. They took everything from us. Even our tongue, our memory, our language sent us so far out. According to Psalms 83, 17. And David smote them from the twilight, even unto the evening, and the next day. And there escaped not a man of them, save four hundred young men, which rode upon camels and fled. See, the more you start to read the, God, the word of God and be in his presence, that peace comes over you. God says, be angry, but sin not. I'm not sinning. He said, don't go, the, you know, don't let the sun go down on your wrap. It's still bright out here, right? And the more I read, you see my countenance turn golly, right? Turn spiritual. You see, it always is. But even a man of God can have a sore vexed spirit. We got to get out of that. Like, God's people don't hurt. God's people don't mourn. God's people don't cry. God's people don't ache. Walk with pain. To a degree. So it goes on to say, verse 18. And David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. And David rescued his two wives. When you men gonna go out there and rescue your wives and just be the head of the household and just take care of your family. Just be the man God called you to be. Be the man after the heart of King David who had a heart after King, after the Most High God. Fight, the, fight in the army of the living God for his people. Stand up, men. Be a King David in this day and age. They try to tell you there's no more kings. But un, uh, yes, there is. We are. We're here. We just have to do like Abigail, like I said, if I missed that part of the teaching. We have to, or you can find it in the badass women of this day and age, women of the Bible. She ran into David, and it's back here not too far with her husband Nabal. And uh, pretty much, he, David was going to kill Nabal because he was wicked in the eyes of God. She met David and started speaking to the king and him. Ten days later, her husband Nabal is smote by the Lord and she becomes David's wife. Go back and listen to the earlier read of this part. Or I'm thinking even yesterday we got into it just a little bit. But definitely at the beginning of this video, if you're just tuning in now. This is Religion Week TV and my spiritual ears stay. And you are tuned in to the Morning Read, episode 40. We know people like to get up and read people to filth, but we like to get up and read people to life, okay? Usually, I try to keep these under an hour 
sometimes we go live there was a big hiccup today with me losing files and everything but we're not gonna stay stuck in the past we're gonna keep moving forward in this word because we've been doing it 40 days live uh pre-recorded um premiere and however we have to do it where there's the will of god he will always make a way of an escape a way out a way to get by a way to get over a way to overcome okay people so let's go ahead now it says 20 and david took all the flocks and the herds that they drave before those other cattle and said this is david's spoil like give it all to him 21 and david came to the 200 men which were so faint that they could not follow david whom they had made also to abide at the brook Bethor. and they went forth to meet david and met to and to meet the people that were with him and when david came near to the people he saluted them 22 then answered all the wicked men and men of Belial and those that went with David and said, Because they went not with us, we will not give them all of the spoil that we have recovered. Save to every man his wife, his children, that they may lead them away and depart. 23. Be like these men. Save your women and your children, man. Toughen up. Stop wanting to be other men's men. Stop wanting to be other men's wives. Just toughen up in our community and be the man that God called you to be. Now, don't get me wrong. Matthew 19, 22 talks about eunuchs. I would say that is the gay man of today. But you would have to be for the kingdom of heaven's sake. And you were made that way from your mother's womb. Other men made you that way. Or you chose to be that way. There was men castrating themselves back in the day. So they didn't have to be penetrating other men but they did this for the kingdom of heaven they did this so they can be in the queens and the king's courts and things like that so be careful here when you talk about gays bible going to heaven and all this stuff how which way are you going and we all have to answer that question right how are we going to heaven are we going to heaven is this heaven on earth right here enjoy it people don't be deceived so Verse 22. No, 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 no. 23. Then said David, Ye shall not do so, my brethren, with that which the Lord hath given us. Who hath preserved us and delivered the company that came against us into our hand? 24. For who will hearken unto you in this matter? But as his heart is that goeth down to the battle, so shall his heart, so shall his part. He that tarrieth by the staff, they shall part alike. Okay, 25. And we are getting down. We got to go to verse 31. And it was from that day forward that he made it in a statue and and an ordinance for Israel unto this day. Sidebar, I remember this. The Lord, the God, the Lord of the Most High God deals with laws, ordinance, statues, not graven images. These are still like commandments. And um, law, statute, or in judgments. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Law, statute, commandments, ordinance. Law, statute, commandment, ordinance. It's like judgment. It's like rules to live by. Don't let nobody tell you that's not so. Yes, there's 613. More so than the 48 laws that you know of this day and age. But God somehow got them down to 10 commandments. And you still have a problem with the two. The New Testament say, just love your neighbor uh, as you love yourself. And love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. But see, this was told to you on the slave, on the plantations. Love your neighbor who was generally the Caucasian man on some of these tribes and plantations and land masses and when they came in to kill steal and destroy you were told to love your neighbor through the abuse through the hurt through the pain and, and turn the other cheek instead of stand your ground and not let your neighbor kill your wives rape your kids abuse you put yokes and shit on you treat you like animals and cruel and inhumane and all this other stuff so Christians stop it stop it Stop it with some of the things you do in this church, okay? Please, teach the people the truth. 
28. And David came to Ziglag. He sent out the spoil unto the elders of Judah, even to his friends, saying, Behold, a present for you of the spoil of the enemies of the Lord. 27. To them which were in Bethel, and to them which were in the south Ramoth, and to them which were in Jatir. 28. And to them which were in the Sipmoth, and to them which were in Estamoa. Right? Um, 29. And to them which were in Rachel, and to them which were in the cities of Jeremeliites, and to them which were in the cities of the Kenites. And check this out. All we know is there's 12 tribes of the Hebrew Israelites. All these other ites can be in the Bible. They existed. So didn't the Israelites. Their own walk, their own way of life, and people kept in, 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 imputing themselves, uh, uh, in, in, uh, uh, inserting themselves into our customs and putting their customs, you know, uh, on us and things like that. You gotta pay attention to this world. So, and to them. We, oh, oh, we got there. Can I thirty? And to them which were the, were in Horma, and to them which were in Chorashan, and to them which were in Atat. Thirty one, the last verse of chapter thirty. And to them which were in the Hebron, and to all the places where David himself and his men were wont to hunt, were wont to hunt. Thirty one. Let's get right into it, guys. Religion Wing TV and my spiritual ears stay ringing. Hopefully we'll stay under an hour and a half, guys. I am so sorry this happened. We got 13 verses to go. I'll just read through it and do the best I can. 31 chapter, chapter 31, verse 1. Now the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell down slain in Mount Gilboa. 2. And the Philistines followed hard upon yep, followed hard upon Saul and upon his sons. And the Philistines slew Jonathan, David's best friend, his armor bearer, Saul's son, and Ahimadab, and Melchishua. Three of his sons got slewed in one day from the prophecy Samuel told him when he conjured him up from the dead with that lady in Endor. Uh, and he said, you and your sons will see me. Y'all be with me this time tomorrow, right? We read that earlier. In the battle, listen. In the in three, in the battle went sore against Saul. And the archers hit him. And he was sore wounded of the archers. I imagine back in that day, they had a line of archers. They had millions, you know, rows and rows of the, the swords. They had spears. They probably had... I, they might even have guns back in the day. You see some Chinese movies, they be having guns in it, right? But let me just say, uh, you know, they, they, they had rows, then they probably had the horsemen, or however they lined them up, the horsemen first. But, you know, rows and rows and rows and rows. So somebody that was throwing a bow and arrow, that's an archer, got saw. So then it goes on to say, three, in the battle when sword against Saul, and the archers hit him. He was sore wounded of the archers sore. And then Saul said unto his armor bearer, Draw that sword and thrust my uh, thrust me through therewith, lest these uncircumcised come thrust me through and abuse me. But his armor bearer would not, for he was sore afraid. Therefore Saul took a sword and fell upon it. Now Saul is like, I'd rather you kill me. I know you. Please kill me before these uncircumcised people do. Please. Just like David said to Jonathan, his son. Please kill me, Jonathan, before your father do. I'd rather you kill me pretty much than Saul. I ain't never did nothing to your dad. Why should I give him the pleasure of killing me? If I'm going to die by the hands of your father, I'd rather you do it. Jonathan said, you're not going to die by my father's hand. And that's absolutely true because Saul is about to die here and have died. And David still lives. But we just have to see how his life goes on. So stay tuned with these morning reads, people. It's important to see how we end up in the New Testament 
in the American westernized churches when we didn't start out here. So it goes on to say, five. And when his armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he fell likewise upon his sword and he died with him. Some people are so loyal, they'll drink. They'll drink of the same spirit. Some people drink of the spirit of God. Some people drink of the spirit of wickedness. So loyal, you'll take your own life because somebody you love so much just fell on their own sword. Who knows? He may not probably would have never died or got killed by them. They may have just let him live in his wounds and he might have got healed from his wounds. But, you know, this is like suicide here. And, yeah, you know, no Mona Simone and her people were playing with suicide not too long ago on April 1st of this year 2019 so people do want to take their own lives and have reasons for it but uh it's no joke here and it surely ain't no joke on these youtube streets when people sell out like that wickedly to do something so horrible to the people they say they love and they know love them so it goes on to say six so saul died and his three sons and his armor bearer and all his men that same day together just like samuel said this time tomorrow you and your sons will be with me even poor jonathan who loved king david elect so much seven and when the men of israel that were on the other side of the valley and they that were on the other side of jordan saw that the men of israel fled and that saul and his sons were dead they forsook the cities and fled, and the Philistines came and dwelt in them. 8. And it came to pass on the morrow, when the Philistines came to the strip of the slain, that they found Saul and his three sons fallen at Mount Gilboa. 9. And they cut off his head and stripped him of his armor and sent him into the land of the Philistines round about to publish it in the house of their idols and among the people. Because this is what David did to Goliath. Cut off his head, took it to Saul. David ended up with Saul's, um, spe I mean, Goliath's spear. Now they give, they repaying Saul back the same thing. Cut off his head, take it to the Philistines, let them know, look, your enemy is you know gone no longer to bother you and they you know they put it you know in the house for the idols and people to worship it like yeah just like i was telling you about christ look the romans got full of paganism over there in the vatican look what we did to jesus we look we did to the black messiah jesus is what they're promoting around the world but look what they did look what they did right so anyway, verse 10. Oh, let's not lose contact here. And they put his armor in the house of Ashtaroth, and they fastened his body to the wall of Bashan. Ashtaroth is the Egyptian god I was telling you that would dip her fertility god, dip her eggs in blood. Now they translate it to Easter on the cusp of of um ash wednesdays where they put the ash in the cross of the crosses they probably burning through the kkk right um on your foreheads i think that's very demonic for some reason but then they also know that rebecca and jacob tricked isaac and they said something about they went out to get some meat and they made a bowl of lint they celebrate Lent 40 days. Pay attention, people. And it's right before Easter is on the cusp of it. So Easter moves March, April, May, February, whenever they feel like it and whenever they move the calendar to make it do so because they don't want you to remember when the real Christ resurrected from the dead. So you hop over here in March. You hop over here in February. Sometimes Easter's in March. Sometimes uh, 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 um, April, you know what I'm saying? Back and forth, back and forth. Pay attention, people. Ashtaroth is a pagan god of the Egyptian faith. Osiris, Tammuz, Ra, Amen, Ra, Seth, 
Those are the Egyptian gods, people. Remember in the Prince of Egypt, God fought against Ra, Pharaoh's God. Two different things here. Moses was raised by a black man, so he had to have been of the same skin texture, color, to a, you know, to a degree. When Moses seen an Egyptian kill a Hebrew Israelite, he turned on Pharaoh and saved his people. Alright, so we got to get going, guys. Two more verses here. Oh, my God. 11, 3. And when the uh, 11, and when the inhabitants of Jeshpegiliad heard that which of the Philistines had done to Saul, 12, all the valiant men arose and went all night and took the body of Saul to the bodies of his sons from the wall of Bashan and came to Jebeth and burnt them there. And this is the last verse of the morning. Read, guys. And they took their bones and buried them under a tree in Jebeth. Now, this is Religion Wink TV, and my spiritual ears stay. Remember, guys, let the word of God be a lamp unto your feet, and a, uh, a word, uh, be a lamp unto your feet, and a light unto your pathways. That way, wherever you go, you'll step bright, and, and your world will be bright. And wherever you go, being led by the Holy Spirit, you'll shine His light. This is the truth, what we have closest to it. Know it, learn it. Put it out there, preach it, teach it, until all the ears hear it, you know? So with that being said, guys, thank you so much for joining me in this morning's read. I'm going to go ahead and get a little relaxed here. God bless you. Again, Religion Wink TV and my spiritual ear <laughs> Thank you, guys. You have been awesome. If you haven't already, subscribe. Become a part of the Wink Squad, Wink Stars. We shine bright over here. We say we're lace, L-A-Y-S-E. That's looking at you sideways. Side eyes, we lace, we looking at you side eye, you know what I'm saying? That is evil, that's the wickedness of the world. You have to remember, we read that uh, the side eye is eternal, but it started in the Bible. You have to look at people with a side eye. We read that not too long ago. Go on my playlist, go back from March 2nd. We started on Deuteronomy chapter 5 right publicly and now we're going into the second book of samuel this the tenth book of the bible we have done this publicly now for 40 days straight i'm excited you give me encouragement i hope this has encouraged you and tell people that this is religion wing tv i am religion wing tv and it's my spiritual ear that stays